That was Jamie T. Zombie on X of M. This is Josh Riddicum. Good Sunday morning. How are you, producer Neil? I'm okay now, thanks, Josh. Now? Oh, yeah, I had a migraine. Oh, you had a migraine, yeah, yeah, I did know that. Did you tweet about it? No. Literally only me and your wife knew. Yeah, it's not the anecdote I was hoping it would be, if I'm honest with you, mate, but we'll plough on. It's a big week for the show. Um, Last week, James Acaster's cabbaging wars, in which he was fighting a nine-year-old, ended with him filling the nine-year-old's bedroom with cabbage. It's been basically the theme of the show for three months. Catch up on the podcast. Catch up on the podcast. You can download it on iTunes. I've got a, a new thing, a new big thing that's a treat for you that is going to be the new centre of the show. That's coming up. How do you feel about that? Good. Also, on top of that, right, we have, for the first time, James Acaster on the show with one of the victims of one of his scrapes. <laughs> Someone who, before the show, has... I don't want to use the word baddie. <laughs> I don't want to use the word baddie, but James Acaster's coming face to face with someone he talked about for nine and a half minutes. And um, someone he described as in her 30s. <laughs> She's 27. So it's, it's stuff to look forward to. He doesn't know this is going to happen to him. You know, she said to me that their relationship has been awkward ever since. Josh Widdicombe. Sunday mornings, Josh Widdicombe, XFM. The Holy Trinity. <laughs> can we get that made into a jingle? I'll write it down for collector, sir. Yeah? Yeah. So, uh, who can we, can we get John Suchet to say it? I can. There's, there's any number of great broadcasters in this building I could get. If I want Suchet. I was going to say I could try and get Emma Bunton. Yeah, can you get Emma Bunton, please? <laughs> That's all we need. It'll be great. Uh, now, we come to the point in the show, um, any other business, in which um, people have written in with uh, pedantic issues they've had with the show. And we uh, either take them on board or we reject them. Um, If we uphold the um, complaint. And if we reject the complaint. You've wasted everyone's time. There we go. Right. Dear Josh and producer Neil. Greetings from the past. (laughs) What a great start. (laughs) Sorry. I've recently started listening to the podcast from the very beginning. They keep me company during the lonely working hours. I've rattled through the first year and now in my world we're just about to experience the World Cup together. (laughs) Fingers crossed we don't get knocked out in the group stage. (laughs) That would be embarrassing, and I can't wait to find out if Neil completes his sticker collection. (laughs) Highlights include, anyone can play guitar, open brackets, personal fave, Nick Knowles, close brackets, play your height right, (laughs) and the Christmas film game, open brackets, can't remember the name, close brackets. There is one issue I'd like to raise. On several occasions, Josh has mentioned an incident that occurred during his work experience of 442 magazine. You know the one, he had to write a letter for the letters page and end up being the star letter, but wasn't allowed to have the prize. A very funny story. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was a good story. But, but each time he tells it, the prize changes. First, it was a pair of Sondaco keeper gloves. Then it was a football alarm clock. Finally, it was something else. I can't remember, maybe a mitre delta magnum. Anyway, my question is, which prize was it? Keep up the good work, MD Stevenson. P.S. If you mention, if you were to mention this on air, it'd be a lovely surprise for me in a few weeks' time when I get around to listening to it on the podcast. P.P.S. Also, another little thing. On the first episode in 2014, when Josh returned from Mexico and forgot to bring Neil and Acaster's present, he said he'd bring it in the next week and that it would be something to look forward to. It wasn't mentioned in the next podcast. Did he bring them in? Should we start with that? You did. I got a little doll in a box that was to do with Pink Floyd, I think. Got to be honest, mate, I, it's not in my house anymore. What happened to it? Well, it got thrown out. <laughs> it was broken when you gave it to me. Well, that's unbelievable. Um, the, the other one, uh, that was me tearing paper. That wasn't a sound effect we've got. That was actual real live radio. Um, I don't think it was a football alarm clock that I what, didn't win. I think I got a football alarm clock um, as a prize uh, when I took part in ESPN's Talk of the Terrace which was a um, short-lived uh, football show presented by Kelly Cates, and they had a mastermind section. And uh, I did Plymouth Argyle. Uh, former England international cricketer O.A. Shah did Manchester United. did much worse than me, so I won an alarm clock. That's where there is, that is from. So I can't remember what the prize was. <laughs> you know, shout out to Andy Stevenson in a few weeks. Um, thank you very much for your AOBs. Um, if you've got any issues with the show... Email them, josh at xfm.co.uk. Josh Widdicombe, XFM. 
Uh, so that was the Chemical Brothers. F- Noel Gallagher. That is the FT as in featuring, but you know, you don't have time for that kind of thing. Now, on the Josh Whittacombe Show, it's time for the two topics we want to talk about today. And now, Neil, I know it's a big day for you. Uh, we haven't revealed yet what I'm going to set you to do over the next few weeks to change your life. But um, the topic I do want to talk about is, um, have you ever been an extra or had minor roles on TV? I haven't. But I, the, the, the smallest role I've had was I did the... Pre- not the smallest. I've had much smaller roles. I mean, uh, I've done various panel shows where I've barely made the edit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you saw Comic Relief's 8 out of 10 Cats 24-hour marathon, but whoo, um, <laughs> I did The Apprentice You're Fired recently. And um, I was on with Karen Brady and another businessman whose name escapes me. It's uh, Dara and then there's three chairs. I don't know if you've seen it behind a desk. We, we get up there, we both sit down. Karen Brady says to me... Um, my chair's too short. We're swapping chairs. And um, I didn't have an option because she's more alpha than me. <laughs> and she she basically made me swap chairs and I could barely see over the desk. <laughs> and I got a lot of tweets saying you were sitting on the floor. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, have you ever been on TV? I think we've covered it before. I had a two-minute programme made about me. don't remember this. It was our local ITV. We're doing a special on gap years. You know, like one of those kind of... Oh, yeah. Silly little yeah. things, yeah. So I obviously had a gap year, so they came around my house and just filmed me like... Well, your gap year was at your house. Where did you find yourself? <laughs> the sitting room? I bet I did that joke last time. I don't think you did. Oh, no, well, no, you I... Uh, it's glad we revisited it so that I could really dust that one, bring that one out. Yeah, I have been on telly. There you go. Is that it? I, I don't want to go well, into it. Well, we'll see what happens later in the show. The other things, um, finding things on public transport. Well, the past few weeks we've discussed how I found free copies of the Times. Oh, that's what, yeah, that's where this comes from. You, we, you didn't find, did you? Stole from first class. I once left a um, um, I once was going to the bank to pay in two hundred pounds in cash. I put it in my book and then left my book on the bus. Even now, I just feel. I wonder who found that. Who thought? Oh, but oh my word, two hundred. Would you have handed that in? Yes. Would you? Intern Charles shaking his head. But on the <laughs> other side, <laughs> yes. on the other side, um, I was once emptying the bins at Totnes Safeway as my job, <laughs> and I opened up the bin, and on top was a, a brand new copy of "I Might Be Wrong" the Radiohead live album. Wow! Who hates Radiohead that much that they've placed it into a bin? <laughs> Or who knows you love Radiohead so much they thought this will cheer him up while he's oh, taking out the bins. On, oh, do you, reckon it was, do you reckon it was a gift? Might have been your mum or dad. <laughs> have you? Um, what have you lost on public transport or found? I always lose hats and yeah. gloves. I don't buy an umbrella for that reason. In fact, Sunter, who obviously does the show after Backwards, this one, yeah, we'll see she that. confesses to regularly just taking umbrellas she finds <laughs> finds on the buses. Oh yeah, I think the umbrella mer- merry-go-round is completely acceptable. Okay, fine. I leave, lose iPods. I'm, a, I'm a, my iPod habit is about two or three a year at the moment. What? I just can't keep them. But I can't use my phone because who's what music on their phone? How have you? If you can have enough room for your whole record collection on the phone, you don't like music, <laughs> and you shouldn't be allowed to listen to it. <laughs> that would be my rule. Okay, good. <laughs> and also Spotify, you can't use it underground. But you can get offline playlists. How do make people make that work? I can't make it work. We'll have a half-hour session after the show today. What about the Spotify playlist? <laughs> Come on, it can't all be gold. Josh Whittacombe. X of M, Sunday morning. Josh Whittacombe, the Holy Trinity. The I am Emma Bunton. That's how it would sound, Neil, if we had a jingle. She wouldn't say, I am Emma Bunton. I'm going to play you next week. We'll have a game where I'll play you a Spice Girls song. You've got to identify which lines are Bunton. Well, that's <laughs> worth tuning in for, don't you? <laughs> I don't think I'll turn up, let alone the listeners. <laughs> we'll call it... Whose Bunton line is it anyway? Anyway. <laughs> it doesn't write itself, mate. It's a lot of effort, this show. Friend of the show, Laura Sorensen, on the topic of uh, appearing as an extra on, on TV. This is superb. I appeared in the background when Rich and Judy sent cameras to a rock, paper, scissors championship. Now, this is the detail I like. I was losing. <laughs> <laughs> How are you losing? You either you either win or you lose, don't you? It's not like a long tussle, is it? Might be best of three, best of best five. Best of three. I bet it's, I bet it's, I bet it's higher than that. Should you, people play along at home if you do rock, paper, scissor? All right, yeah. Shall we have a quick game? 
Go on, then. What, with the, with the listeners? Yeah, so we, you just do it, and then I'll tell people what they've got. <laughs> and then they can kind of go, oh, I beat Josh, or I lost to Josh. So, this is great radio. This is why we've got you on board. One, two, three. Josh did paper. I mean, do you want one more? Tom Lainton. I was in the audience for You Bet. Had to sit on a bus as somebody pulled it along on a bicycle. <laughs> Josh Widdicombe. Good morning. It's Sunday. It's Josh Widdicombe. It's producer Neil. Good morning. The holy quadrulity. <laughs> and now we are joined. <laughs> Uh, by show debutante, BT Edmondson. Hello. Hello. Hi. How That's are you? a nice introduction. Did you like that? I did. It makes me sound like I'm growing up in California. And the, like, what, that you're a debutante at a prom? Yeah. Did you have a prom at school? Um, we had like a leavers dinner, but it was really bad. Was it? It was like in our school hall. I, I knew people who had Let like, me just, amazing... before, before this anecdote, I've, All right. let's just make listeners aware I've got a chip on my shoulder about the fact. <laughs> I went to a private school. That she went to private school and she would have gone to the same school as me. But Sleep she happened. threw money at the situation. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wasn't wasn't me? No, 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 no. It wasn't you. <laughs> I demanded. You demanded, yeah. Mum, Dad, <laughs> with my millions. With my- um, it was just in our school hall, and we had like a really weird dinner <laughs> during the evening. Yeah, it was in the and evening. Did you dress up for it? Yeah, we all dressed up, but did you, did you have, for no reason. Did you have a date? Um, I did have a date. Did but you? He, he was my boyfriend, and do you want to say something, something yeah. really cheesy? Yeah. Um, we both got voted best dressed. So. Oh, come on! Hey, oh. And did you have to, did you get nominated as a pair? Um, no, no, no. We so actually won, won separately. Oh Best my Wrestle word! Was. So what I did you know. wear? Oh, just a little designer number. <laughs> oh God, your parents threw money at the situation oh, again. We really did. Oh, um, so what's happened to him? He's now in the army. But he's not wearing best dressed in uh, the army. <laughs> oh, oh no! Um, have the the topics we're talking about today. Have you ever been on TV in a very minor role as an extra? Or on, like, a non-acting <laughs> basis? Well, yeah, because when I was little... Oh, here we go. Uh, this is a- <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, for those of you who don't know, um, my parents are comedians. So you were in Chuckle Vision? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your parents are Paul and Barry Chuckle? Yeah, they are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what have you been in? Um, I've been in... Fre- a lot of French and Saunders, actually. Oh, right. I was on Going Live. We were you on Going Live? Yes, I was on Going Live. Oh, and you, should, you, you should watch the clip. There's a clip of it on YouTube. Because yeah. I'm sitting with my dad, who's being interviewed by Sarah Green. It's me and my sister. Yeah. And um, we insisted on being there with him what when he was being interviewed. Say? Your dad, Adrian Edmondson. Yes, my dad, Was Adrian on Edmondson. Going Live, what, going to promote live. Bottom? Well, who <laughs> bloody knows? I mean, <laughs> just... Yeah, who knows? Who, 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 what viewer of Going Live is is a fan? No offence to your dad, who I'm a big fan of. It's very strange. But no, Going Live viewer is going, I really <laughs> want to see Adrian Edmondson. So what did That's you really do on Going Live? I was sat there in this really weird, awkward interview with um, Sarah Green and my dad. Mm. And in the background, I was just doing like hand signals. My older sister's just leaning there on my dad. <laughs> <laughs> like, just not moving. Wow. But did it's you really know what bizarre. it was, Going Live? Yeah, I loved it. Now, Gordon the Gopher was like, Gordon, hero. Gordon the Gopher was great. Yeah. Josh Whittaker. Cleanse your palate. That was a new taste of the Foo Fighters on um, XMM. I don't mean cleanse it because it's just, you know, you don't want to, you don't want that. To... Let's move on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is Josh Whittaker on XM. Producer Neil. Good morning. And BT Edmondson. Hello. Are still here. Now, <laughs> um, do you want some stories of listeners? Just one. People appearing as extras. Now, I would know you're on going live, BT, so get ready to have your story blown out oh of the water. <laughs> Bluey the Swan writes, Remember MTV Select with Richard Blackwood? Stood behind the glass wavering once, and he called me the man. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. That's a really... I mean, that, oh. that's a great moment for anyone. I mean, Richard Blackwood... Have you ever met Richard Blackwood? No, but I just feel I feel like I have a pain in my heart for him. <laughs> oh, You're worried fine. you'll meet Richard Blackwood? Yeah, yeah. At one of your parents' And that he might be my future husband. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he might be your future husband. <laughs> if you marry Richard Blackwood, I'll pay for the ceremony. <laughs> Josh Widdicombe, XFM. It is now time for... Um, well, it's become quite a kind of leaderboard situation, hasn't it, Neil, on the Josh Widdicombe show? It has, but Acaster ruined it. By yeah, by getting five out of five. 
each week on Call My Josh, I'll give you five versions of something you have to just say if they're true or false. It's that simple. Cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got it? Uh, yeah. 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 I think so. Yeah, good. All right, well, good. <laughs> you know, money wasn't wasted on that education. <laughs> 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 um, now, uh, BT Edmondson. Yeah. True or false on five oh, art God. attacks created by Neil Buchanan? Oh, what? Okay. Were you were you a fan of them? Um, I mean, yeah, but I I don't think I really absorbed. A tip for this is try and remember the kind of references he normally drops in a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and listen up to them. Six or one. I do. <sighs> Neil Buchanan does an art attack of a lion pouncing on a gazelle, <laughs> made up of Adidas gazelles. <laughs> <laughs> no. Correct. Yay! One out of one. Good. References. Good. That was such a good clue. Number two. Neil Buchanan does an art attack of himself using his trademark red art attack jumper, classic blue jeans and electric white trainers, (laughs) plus some socks, pants and towels. Neil makes a big self-portrait. Yeah, true. Correct. Oh, Oh, ACAS is looking awkward now. (laughs) I don't like this. Uh Uh-oh. Neil does a big art attack. Of John Major, made up of polling boxes. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, it's feasible. Is it? No, it's false. False. It's false. Correct. Oh, oh, yes. I don't know whether I gave that one away then. <laughs> I think when you said polling boxes, you gave it away. <laughs> it's a good one this week, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Right, number four. Okay. Neil Buchanan does a um, big art attack of a beaver using sticks. Not saying he was running out of ideas this week, if it's true. 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 Oh, yes! my God. Oh, my God. Here we go. I, I, it's Poor not looking Alfie. good for you, Acaster, because of the last one. I mean, <laughs> I shouldn't have saved the one for last that's the least tense. <laughs> Neil Buchanan does a big art attack of French and Saunders. <laughs> <laughs> Made up of VHSs of French and Saunders. I feel... <laughs> I feel like I would have remembered that. <laughs> False. Oh, oh, oh. That's the thing. Yeah. You spend too much time Secretly. with Josh Widdicombe. <laughs> That's the only the skill you learn in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it should be art attacks every week. That's my favourite one you've done. Is it? Yeah, yeah I think it's great. One. Have you done um, Friends episodes before? We were going to do today. Oh. What were we going to do now? We're going to do acting jobs that Joey in Friends had. <laughs> <laughs> great. That's a really it's good It's much one. harder to research this instead. <laughs> <laughs> so we did art attacks. Josh Widdicombe, XFM. Placebo, Pure Morning, and before that, Sunset Suns, Josh Widdicombe. XFM, Sunday morning, the Holy Trinity, I'm Emma Bunton. That's what we want you to get recorded, Neil. I'll make it my... Yeah, OK, I'll see. <laughs> I mean, if you do, I will be very surprised and impressed. <laughs> do you want, BT Edmondson, yeah. someone who's found something on public transport? What? What? It's one of the topics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's a let's tweet ex- from someone who's oh, found... Do, oh, right. A tweet. I thought you just said, do you want someone... No, yeah, sorry. I mean, it was my fault. It was my fault, sorry. You didn't explain. Sure, sorry. tweet. Yeah, yeah, no, I'd love, love it. Fiona Scott. I found an abandoned bouquet of flowers. Oh. Hashtag tragic love story. Oh, no. oh, no, no. Hashtag tragic train love story. I once saw a guy waiting at an airport with a little book of poetry and he was wearing like a little bow to hat. He was like an old man with a little book of poetry and a bunch of flowers. And he, someone like eventually brought him a chair because he couldn't. Oh, oh no! Oh, He's been there for so oh, long. Oh. That is the plot of a Pixar film. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think bit, how old was he when he started waiting? <laughs> <laughs> Josh Widdicombe. Uh, Neil, producer Neil. Good morning. Do you feel there's a hole in the show since James A. Custer resolved his cabbaging problems? <laughs> I didn't, but I suspect you did. I did, so I felt like we needed something to run on. So, um, I'm recording a sitcom uh, in the next six weeks. You are? And I might have wrangled you a role as an extra. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> Excited? Is it paid work? I reckon it would be. Is yeah, it paid work? I think it's about 50 quid. It's my going rate, right? yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, I thought, uh, you know, it'd be, it'd be fun for the listeners to try and spot you, because no one knows what you look like, really. Okay. So they try and spot you, we'll put you in the show, <laughs> you won't speak. Could I get a line? Because I think, from what I know about TV, if you say a line, you get more money. It's not oh. just about the greenbacks, mate. I need a new kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, BT, uh, you're, you're in the show. I'm in it, yeah. Yeah, and James Acaster is um, in one of the episodes as well. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so you're getting paid? Uh, let me just count my lines. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, Beta, you're a proper actress. Um, I'm not trained. It's not what you said during your audition. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just act like I'm trained. You act like you're trained. Yeah. So if you could give Neil some tips. Um, give him a line and it'll do it and then we'll see how it goes. Okay. Uh, say, um, I don't know. Uh... <laughs> Uh, to be or not to be. That's a good one. But in what? That's a good, uh, oh, That's I bet Shakespeare's line. pleased with the review. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he bloody loves it. But what in what context? Um, Are you asking what your motivation is? No, I don't mean that. I'm, I'm well, just no, kind of treating it no, like a, a show. Question. It's a good question because he does need to know what his motivation is. If okay. You were made, your motivation is like... Uh, <laughs> Questioning? Yeah. Well, wondering whether you should live or die. Oh, well, so you're oh wondering that's a whether, good one. That's quite, that is the motivation of to be or not to be. I'd, I've never read it, so... <laughs> no, but it's implicit. <laughs> I don't know, just to be or not to be. Oh, come on, mate. Feel it. Oh, God. The key is listening. I'll give you a line in. Listen to me. Absorb it. You've learned something. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. My licence fee's paying for it. <laughs> Do you... <laughs> Do you want to live? Yeah, but the line doesn't then make sense to be yeah, a lot no, no, you're musing to yourself. Oh, sort okay. Of. Oh, God. Do you realise I was working oh, with Daniel Day-Lewis? <laughs> no lines make sense if you watch a film. If you watch it, they actually written down don't make any sense, Neil. They just sell it really well. <laughs> <laughs> to be or not to be? It's going to be a long few weeks. This yeah. is XFM. <laughs> Josh Widdicombe. XFM. House of Pain, Jump Around, which um, Neil says so samples the Harlem Shuffle. It does. It's a little bit extra for the listeners there, isn't it? <laughs> it's a Josh Riddicombe show, throwing out facts, willy-nilly. <laughs> Still joined by BT Edmondson. I've been asked to leave. We tried to rush you out. Uh, James Acaster. <laughs> Hello, Josh. Now, I don't like tension between guests. Now, I know this is the first time you have been confronted in the studio with one of the baddies from one of your scrapes. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, now, um, oh. I just want to bring up one fact that came up, which is probably the Beatty's worst moment. The moment when you described your friend as <laughs> in her 30s. <laughs> <laughs> I'll really? do that. <laughs> Real blow. Uh, how old are you, I was, uh, I'm 27. I was trying to disguise. You were 26 at the time? Yeah. Wow, maybe, yeah, 26. Uh, I was trying to disguise what I was talking about, though, Beatty. Sure, okay. I didn't want to give it sure. away. All right. That it was That's you. That's a stick license. No, I get it. It's uh, fine. Yeah. 27, yeah. really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. um, you went to Beatty's Halloween party last year. Well, I didn't. Well, yeah. <laughs> You're very much a temporary presence, yeah. yeah. You end up in an argument with uh, her sister's boyfriend. Yeah, my sister's yeah. boyfriend. Who described as 20. Yeah. Yep. So what's the distance in real life age between... Um, well, he's probably about 23 at the time. Mm. And you're 26 at the time. He was six, dressed as a skeleton, yeah. so he looked but eight, James with put a scar eight, James put a clear 15 years between you. I think it was more just the distance between, like, these young scallywags in the in the main room that I was confronted with and like then the you, mature you were confronted adults in the hallway. I was, I was coming yeah. to hang out with. He was confronted yeah. in the hallway by a guy who was very rude to him refu- and then you got in an argument and never made it into the party. I was told I had to have a costume <laughs> and if I didn't one would be provided for me on the door. So I'd come that straight, was true. I'd come straight from a gig yeah. so I was like I have to have one at the door and uh, when he answered the door and saw me not in a costume he didn't go oh you haven't got a costume here's one from the rack. He told me to go home in a way which wasn't <laughs> wasn't very nice. And I can only apologise. Not your he's fault, a mate. Ver- he's l- usually lovely. Well, there we go. Um, wow. We've put that to bed, though. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, so each week, eh, Custer, we're going to confront you with a person from your past. <laughs> It'd be great if like, each one has uh, each, someone from a scrape. Yeah. 
the the reunite the band from La 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 Humpty. La 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 Humpty. To take us into the song, James, um, your your favourite ever scrape is that. La 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 Humpty, yeah, probably. I don't know. I think so. <laughs> Could you sing us a verse of La 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 Humpty? No, and then we'll... no, no. Too embarrassing. <laughs> Josh Widdicombe. Podcast. XFM. Paolo Natini, uh, Iron Sky on XFM with me, Josh Widdicombe. We, we're still up for debate on whether we think samples of people speaking should be used in records. They should. Okay, so that's dumb. Now, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Scooby Snacks. Yep, James Acaster oh, yeah. there. Yeah. BT Evans and Hello. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the Holy Bible by the Main Street Preachers has got loads of them. Yeah. yeah. Most, tra- mm. most of the tracks begin with it. Yeah, it's, it's great, good. man. What an... Did I just go, it's great, man? <laughs> you did. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great album. Go and see it played live Basically, you can't in see sequence smoking in, in December. <laughs> <laughs> right, now, appearing on TV as an extra or in a very minor role. I mean, I haven't asked you, James, if you've done mm. this. Tried to. My my mum uh, once um, appeared on Pet Rescue. <laughs> <laughs> of course he did. Diane Acaster. Diane Acaster. Diane Acaster. Uh, Sorry, to... overly familiar. Yeah, don't call her Diane, mate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't remember, I don't remember you being at her birthday. Um, <laughs> she used to look after bats that were injured. Oh, <laughs> oh come on! God, <laughs> injured cute. bats. Yeah, there'd be injured bats and uh, nurse it back to health and release it into the wild. Oh. Where did she keep them? Uh, she just they, they could just sleep in a tank while they weren't flying and stuff, and then she'd teach them how to fly in the living room, and then no, and, yeah. what have you and, not uh, wanted to have a fly? Did not know that. No, what? Yeah. Your mum was flying bats around the living room. Yeah, they'd be flying down the circuit, doing laps around the ceiling. <laughs> it was it on a string or was it? No, 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 it was on a string. So she'd let go. They're, they're, they're normally first, in the dark. The first flight. Did she have no. to turn the lights off? No, no, no. Is they fine in the? But they kind of just fly to the curtains sometimes. So the first flight would just be yeah. from a from her hand. In the Did middle, she have like a glove, like a falconer? No, no, because no. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't a falcon. <laughs> um, so then one bat was found at Corby Steelworks, <laughs> and um, Pet Rescue got phoned, um, and they, they were like covering Pet Rescue, wind of it. Yeah, yeah, they were, they were right there, and then they phoned and Corby Steelworks phoned up my mum, and said. Pet Rescue are kind of filming this progress. I said, you know, if we're going to send it to you, it'd be great if you could let them come over. So they came over to film Who my mum looking after the back. No one. They would just be filming my mum looking after the back and doing voiceover. Uh. So it was just a camera crew. And the annoying thing is that my mum wouldn't give the bats names and they had called their bat Radar because it's such yeah. a cliched name oh, for a yeah. bat. And they said, you've got... <laughs> Sorry, that's not a sentence that I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, mate. It's like, a cliched name for a bat. If you were doing a kid's cartoon and there's a bat, you'd call it Radar straight yeah. away. It's just so... Anyway. <laughs> they, they insisted that she had to refer to it as Radar all the time, which she didn't Did like Did you ever refer to her as... Um... Bat mom. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was worth it. Bat it was mom. genuinely worth when it. When we asked for our dinner, that is how we <laughs> would ask for it, Josh. Um... Yeah, and when they came over to film, I tried to. I sat in the background for the whole thing, just uh, <laughs> just like, like like I was just like just casually just sitting around, just chilling out. <laughs> I'd have been like eleven or twelve, <laughs> just sitting there with my arms folded, just like, and then uh, watched it excitedly when it went out, and they framed me out of all the shots. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It's a shame. It's the saddest thing I've ever heard. Shame. Another sad end. Josh Whittaker, XFM. Blur, Tender, best band ever, dealt with. Listen to Dave Roundtree tonight from nine o'clock. Oh, hey, well, if you get Emma Bond and say stuff like that, we can have it as a jingle, mate. Now, that's uh, producer Neil. I'm Josh Riddicum. James A. Castor is still Hello, here. Josh. BT Edmondson's still here. Hi, Josh. Would you like um, <laughs> to hear some more appearances in minor ways on TV of our listeners? More than anything. Yeah, I'd really love to. Harry Moore. I was in a video for Embrace's official 2006 World Cup song. Nice. Wow. I put it on my CV at the age of 16. Oh. <laughs> what job would that get you? <laughs> Daniel, this is a great one. Street Mate, circa 2003. What a way to start a text. Street Mate. Street Mate, circa 2003. Asked to stand in at the last minute. The woman was so appalled by me, I never made the edit. Having had to shave my head the night before following a disastrous hair dyeing debacle, my scalp resembled that of a blue leopard with alopecia. Oh. It's a shame because in this day and age, he would definitely have made it in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like now, being the, the bad date where the person is appalled by you means yes. you're definitely going to make it in the edit. Yeah. Before his time. If Daniel auditioned for X Factor, 
Oh, he be, being the star it. of the series. Have we discussed my question of, is your singing mediocre enough that you wouldn't make the edit on X Factor? I, I'm pretty sure I'd make it in. You had a singing teacher. I had a singing teacher, sure. <laughs> but <laughs> I didn't, Why? didn't do very well. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty mediocre. My whole family are really good. My my older sister's a music musician. Yeah. My younger sister's like got choir voice, and oh. my parents are both really good at singing. Is your mum really good at singing? Yeah, I mean she yeah no she is quite good. She keeps that under a bushel. I know. She? Yeah. Tell <laughs> me about it. Edmondson family Christmases is there like a oh bit it's, of a, a, it's trap? a disaster. Do you bon trap. do you have a yeah musical a real Christmas? Von trap and I'm sort of ex- semi excluded. God what a bleak Christmas. Do you do yep. singing at Christmas? No. We just we sit, sit around and we play board games in the evening and um, everyone gangs up against my dad because he's pretty bright. So we all try and, and beat him <laughs> at anything and we get very angry because he's one of those annoying people who, even though he doesn't know a question, he'll logically work out mm. what yeah. the most likely answer is and get mm. it out of that. And you're just like, oh, yeah. forget it. Have forget we ever this. discussed the intelligent man that was his friend that came to our Edinburgh show in 2009? On I don't the think radio we show. have discussed him. This is a level of... Um, James Acaster's dad uh, writes exams? Yep, and marks them. Writes and marks science exams. <laughs> so we did a uh, badly received show in 2009 Edinburgh. Thank you very much. <laughs> Not just us, Nick Helm as well. In Nick Helm's <laughs> one star, three weeks. Best day was when James Acaster's dad's friend came along. How did, it, how did it go? He was also an uh, examiner, and um, Josh asked him what his favourite exam question he's ever set is, and he went, I can't tell you because it's on the, the new exam, but um, I'll give you a clue. It's all about soya beans. <laughs> <laughs> it was the highlight of the month. Josh Widdicombe. Still got time for a uh, a few uh, tweets on when you've appeared on TV as an extra or in a very small role. James Acaster, B.T. Edmondson, still here? Very much. Yep. I almost wrapped your name there. B.T. Edmondson, sorry. So terribly out of order. Producer Neil. Hi. What? <laughs> I said B.T. Edmondson. Sorry. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Right, sorry. So, I, mean, I shouldn't have apologised because I clearly hadn't messed it up as much as I thought I had. <laughs> you know, got away with that, mate. <laughs> Tom Saunders. I was no. in... B.T. Edmondson. <laughs> You're absolutely, you're absolutely having a nightmare here. Come on, mate. Way off. <laughs> Enunciate. Uh, I was in the bill as a clubber on E called Bernie. Production staff baffled I hadn't tried the drug. I was 16. <laughs> <laughs> and also the fact it's illegal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two more that I want to read. Uh, Joanne Duff. I was once a QVC model. And did a 2 a.m. showing for a hair crimper. Nice. 12 viewers, zero sales, burnt hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's an epitaph. <laughs> <laughs> Elle Murphy, I once appeared in the background of a local news item dressed as a pawn in a live chess match. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> uh, there we go. I mean, that was a good text topic, wasn't it, Neil? It was one of the best. I'm glad we went with that. Uh, but next week, what the one we saved back? Worst thing you've seen written on a mug. We are dealing with the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Whitaker, uh, it comes the time in the show when we ask, we you know thank our guests for coming, and as a thank you, they can plug whatever they want. Uh, Neil, would you like to start? I'll start with later on tonight. As normal, I look after Communion Presents from seven till nine, and Dave Roundtree from Blur nine till eleven. Uh, but also tomorrow night is our live well not live but our Noel Gallagher Q&A so it's not live well, it's live in front of an audience but not on air uh, Noel well, Gallagher everything's live at some point mate <laughs> Noel Gallagher Q&A never done before talking about the band's history of Oasis his career to date but then it will be available as an audio book um, and all the proceeds going to make some noise which is Global and XFM's charity thanks I felt you know it felt like a big moment <laughs> no one else did no James was looking <laughs> at his won. phone Oh yeah, thank you, BT. Was Neil talking? (laughs) (laughs) James? I am still on tour. Um, The 3rd, 4th and 5th, I'll be at the Soho... I just faded his mic down, don't worry about it. (laughs) What a prankster. (laughs) (laughs) The beauty was Neil just... 
I just laughed to himself and looked at me. No one knew he'd face his <laughs> mic down. <laughs> Little producer's joke. You know what this means, though? Neil's going to be the perfect extra. Completely unnoticed. <laughs> and yet, no matter what he's doing. <laughs> Good. Um, my, the rest of my run at the Soho Theatres this week. And then I'm in Lincoln, Northampton, Stockton. Oh, I like Stockton. And finally Glasgow. So Yeah, an excellent green room spread in Stockton. Yeah, really? Yeah. Not last time I was there. Oh. <laughs> I didn't get a decent oh. spread. Didn't you? No oh, way. Dear. Booked by Peter Vincent? No. This oh, is Stock- fascinating, Stockton guys. Arc. Sorry. <laughs> Just Stockton Arc. Yeah, yeah well, it's not no, him, no. <laughs> so, so there's the dates. Uh, if you want the details, jamesacaster.com. Yep. B.T. Edmondson. Hello. Um, I want to plug, I'm in a sketch group called Birthday Girls, and we're doing a run at the Soho Theatre uh, from the 9th till the 13th. Of December. Details. Um, details go to at birthdaygirlscomedy.com. I mean, no, that's not. A <laughs> yeah, that's not. That's a, a Twitter yeah, address. I know. I got. I got excited. <laughs> <laughs> Birthdaygirlscomedy.com is our website. Yeah. Twitter at you BJ. James, wait, wait, James, James, you okay? Sorry, what? I, I nearly sneezed, but oh. I, I, I held it in because I'm a professional, and then you referenced it. I mean, <laughs> come on. What's the point of me not yeah. disrupting the show? I, I could sense you just allowing rocking. myself to implode. implode. And then, and then you still stop the show for it. I might as well have sneezed and had fun. It's been a good one, Neil. It's been brilliant today. It's thank been you. really fun. Thank you very much, James. Thank you. Thank you very much, BT. Thank you. Josh Widdicombe.